secret <laughs> that will soon be exposed as we welcome yeah. Mayor Bill Wells <laughs> to our set for a very major announcement. Before we get to it, yeah, sure. How long has this been brewing? And how, at this hour, how many people know? Well, this this is the first place I've talked about this. We put out a press release this morning. Um, I've been uh, involved in this about maybe two weeks now. But, uh, you know, I, I think it's starting to get out there. But this KUSI is the place where I'm announcing it. And it, I think that's fitting. Okay. All right. Well, well, we'll let you do the honors. Let the cat out of the bag. I'm going to run for Congress in the 51st Congressional District against Sarah Jacob. So tell us how you came to this decision and, and why you've decided to run for Congress. Well, I see what's happening in the country just like everybody else. I, I'm worried about these big things like, is it safe to walk outside at night? How, you know, the crime situation is a huge problem. Homelessness is a huge problem. Untreated mental health issues, and you know, I have a, a background in mental health, right. a doctor of psychology. The, this is a big issue for me. These are problems that transcend what I can do as a mayor. I want to get more involved and try to bring the good common sense we've brought to being a mayor in El Cajon to the federal government. Your political resume swamps that of the incumbent. It's not even close, but she holds a sizable financial advantage that uh, will bring all guns to bear on you. How do you, some would say you're on a suicide mission. I, I don't think so. I think the district's more conservative than it looks like on paper. But you know, I also think people really have a hard time connecting with somebody who is a billionaire who's never really had any kind of a job and her grandfather bought her a seat in Congress. You know, I mean, I brought this because this is a newspaper. My first job when I was 11 years old was delivering newspapers for the San Diego Union Tribune. Then I worked at Jack in the Box. Uh, later I worked at Marie Callender's when I was at San Diego State a as a busboy and then a waiter. And eventually I got my doctorate and I worked in hospitals and worked in mental health, worked overnight shifts in the emergency rooms doing psychiatric evaluations. I am like the people that are going to vote for me. Nobody that's going to vote for me is a billionaire. Nobody that's going to vote for me had the opportunities to go to school wherever they wanted. And it's not a bad thing, you know, if, if you have that opportunity, great. But I think people want to vote for somebody who they've seen, somebody that will have courage to stand up for their lives and their issues. I went to school from elementary school through college and in this district. I am from this district. I am of this district. I've raised my kids in this district. I started my business in this, this district. And I think people will, will see that. So let's talk about this district because the okay. 51st is is really a district that encompasses two very different types of, of voters when you look at the area specifically. Sure. Obviously in East County, El Cajon, you're well known, your politics are well known. But when you get to San Diego and you talk about some of the other areas th that are being covered here, Scripps Ranch, Ranchos Penasquitos, uh, Lemon Grove, I believe, La Mesa, yeah. how, how do you sort of a appeal to voters of all type? I mean, you say it's it's more conservative than, it, than the numbers would show. Yeah. How do you appeal to voters on both sides of the aisle? Well, I think you have to talk to them about things that really matter to them. I think people are used to being so polarized and so tribalized that they're told this is the only thing that really matters to you. And then the other side says this is the only thing that really matters to you. And people are saying, well, what about the things that really matter to me? Like, is it safe to go outside at night? Do I have to see homeless tents down the streets? Um, can I afford to buy groceries? Can I afford to pay my rent? Why is SDG&E rates three times, four times higher than anywhere else in the country. Why do we have to pay so much money in gas taxes and personal taxes and income taxes? All these things really matter to people, and they're told that's what we should vote on. You should vote on these couple of wedge divisive issues. But I don't think that's the case. And if I'm going to be successful, I've got to reach out to people and say, if you elect me, I'll be courageous. I will fight for you. I'll fight for what matters to you. And I'm going to filter all that other noise out. But if you're going to be successful, you're going to have to... She can fund the ballot harvesting machine better than you can, at, le at least at this hour. How do you uh, get in that game? I mean, because that to win an election in California, you, you have to be adept at that. Well, I'm not going to give away all the secrets, but I, I am going to tell you, we realize what the game is. And I think most Republicans don't like the rules of the game. And I, I don't really either. I think things have been degraded. And uh, But... To have said that, we have to play by the rules by which we're given. I, I'm in this to win it, and I, and I will do whatever it takes within the law and ethics to do that. Mayor Bill Wells, we, we wish you well in your candidacy. We, we hope to continue to have further discussion with uh, you and your opponent uh, as well. We've, we've talked to her a number of times. So I'm looking forward to this. I, I think it's going to be an interesting debate. 
I, I hope we have a chance to have you both on our air at the same time and, and debate the issues. I would love that. All right. Thank you.